Hi, this is Kelly Haji Constantino, and today we're going to be covering the second part in my Old Testament tithing series. So let's get started. Second Chronicles 31 verse 5 says, And as soon as the commandment came abroad, the children of Israel brought in abundance the first fruits of corn, wine, and oil, and honey, and of all the increase of the field, and the tithe of all things brought they in abundantly. And, and verse 6 says, And concerning the children of Israel and Judah that dwelt in the cities of Judah, they also brought in the tithe of oxen and sheep and the tithe of holy things, which were consecrated unto the Lord their God, and laid them by heaps. Now why did the Israelites give their tithe? The Israelites brought the tithe of all things to the Lord in abundance. This tithe was the first 10% of everything the Lord gave them. This tithe, along with the first fruits, was given to show how much God, God's people wanted to glorify the Lord. So, concerning God's people in Israel... And Judah, the tithe of oxen, sheep, and holy things were brought in consecration to the Lord their God, laying them in heaps. This tithe was given in obedience to the Lord. The Israelites gave their tithe to, to obey God, to live a life of obedience. They obeyed God because they gave the tithe. They gave the tithe to bring glory to God as they obeyed Him. So, Nehemiah 10.38 says... And the priest, the son of Aaron, shall be with the Levites when the Levites take tithes, and the Levites shall bring up the tithe of the tithes unto the house of our God, to the chambers, into the treasure house. The Levites also took tithes when the priest was with them. The first 10% of the tithes was brought into the house of God, to the chambers and the treasure house, because it was holy and glorified God. The Levites brought this tithe in obedience to what commanded the Levites to perform on this earth. So the Levites had to tithe as well. And the Levites brought in every tithe that the Lord commanded them to give to him. So that's the thing with the Levites as they tithe. Then, now, Nehemiah 13, 12 states, Then brought all Judah the tithe of the corn and the new wine and the oil unto the treasuries. So besides Israel and the Levites, Judah also brought in a tithe to God. Judah brought in the tithe of the corn, new wine, and oil unto the treasuries because it belonged to the Lord God. This tithe was holy and it was brought by Judah because the people in that land wanted to show how much honesty and cheerfulness they had before the Lord God. Tithe. Tithing makes us become honest. It makes us become cheerful in the Lord. And, and that's one of the reasons why we give. That's one of the reasons why we tithe. That's one of the reasons we give our 10% because God wants us to tithe all the time, all the time so that we can be truly, so we can truly give the kingdom of God what it needs when we tithe. So, Enough of the Old Testament. Now let's move on to the New Testament. And so the New Testament also talks about tithing as well. So let's go on. Matthew 23, verse 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. So in this scripture, Jesus gives a woe to the hypocrites, because they omitted the necessary doctrines of the biblical faith when paying their tithes. Even though the hypocrites paid tithes, their tithes were not accepted by God because they left out essential truth in the biblical faith. And what I mean by that 
is they didn't, the hypocrites, they didn't obey God in everything. Okay. They uh, basically admitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. And what I understand from this scripture is that God really couldn't accept their gift because they left out the most important doctrines of the Christian faith. They left out the most important theological truths of the Christian faith. And so the thing is, by leaving out essential truth in the biblical faith, how can God accept the hypocrite's tithing? So think about that. Think about that. So 1142, but woe unto you, Pharisees, for ye tithe, here's what this verse says, for ye tithe mint and rue and all manner of herbs and pass over judgment and the love of God. These ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. So Jesus told the Pharisees that they omit judgment and the love of God when giving their tithes. Jesus said to them that they should tithe and accept the judgment and the love of God for their tithe to be truly accepted by God. Jesus stated that the Pharisees should have observed the tithe and the important doctrines of the biblical faith by leaving one of these out, the tithe gets rejected by God. So when we tithe, it is essential that we obey God in everything, that we don't leave out truths that are essential to the biblical faith, that we don't leave out anything that's going to bring disobedience to God. You know, the hypocrites, when they... Uh, um, tied you know when they tied they didn't really they didn't fully obey God they didn't fully obey the scriptures so when you leave one thing out in your life just take this question of thought again how can God accept a tithe if you're being disobedient in other areas if you're sinning in other areas if you're being unrighteous in other areas, if you're performing wicked deeds or evil things that should not have been wicked or evil, how can God accept your tithe? I think t when you tithe, it's important that you tithe with a right heart and that you live in obedience to God. So I think tithing is a must. It's a must for any Christian. But when you become a Christian, God wants us to repent and live in a right relationship with him. So when we have that relationship with God and Jesus, then we tithe. We tithe okay. So with that being said, I just kind of want to pray now that you would be a tither. So Heavenly Father, I pray for the people listening to this message fashion them and mold them into the tither, into the cheerful giver you want them to be, Lord. And may they grow in their relationship with God. May they pursue a heart after God after as they grow in your relationship with you. May they cheerfully give into your kingdom so that it is fully funded. And I pray, Lord, that you would just bless these people who give. In the name of Jesus, amen.